Hello and welcome to part three of this PDO MySQL and PHP lecture. So this lecture is titled CRUD, or this part's titled CRUD. CRUD stands for Create, Read, Update, and Delete. It's the four basic things that we do with information inside of databases. Create is like making a new row, reading is reading existing rows, updating is changing the value of data in place, and delete is deleting record. If you go back to SQL, we learned all these. You got select, you got update, you got delete, and you got insert. So that's sort of the database version of CRUD. So far on the applications, you know, these user applications we've been building, we've done three quarters of it. So let's take a look at the, the, the last program that we did. It was called user3.php. So let's go take a look at it, right? We can add, we can delete, I mean, we can list, we can add, and we can delete. So we've got all that stuff working. It's a functional piece of code, right? It's not unfunctional. And so we can add a new one, all right? Does an insert, we can delete, and this is listing. And so I'm not doing anything tricky. There's no redirects. There's all kind of bad stuff going on here because if I, if I add somebody and I hit add new and then I hit refresh and I say, sure, continue. Oh, it does it again, I hit refresh, it does it again. That's not so good. Delete, I hit refresh, it actually blows up because there's nothing to delete because that's deleting by ID. So it doesn't do redirect. It's, it's generally icky and doesn't do redirect. So let's sort of refactor this code a bit and get this code into um, some functionality. And usually, you know, we, we put some of these things on separate screens. We have a, a add screen, a delete screen, an update screen, and an edit screen. And maybe if you need too much data, uh, uh, you don't, your, your rows are not all the data, then you need a view screen. And if you think about lots of web user interfaces, they have this pattern where you're seeing the stuff, you can make new ones, you can edit existing ones, or you can delete. And so we're going to do a really crude version of what, whoa, what is an approximation of um, most web user interfaces. Okay, so let's take a look at what we got. So this is our index.php, and I'll sort of go through it, sort of top to bottom. We're going to require a database and start our session. This is stuff that by now should be pretty familiar to you. Um, <clears throat> we're not taking any post data to this index because we've moved that to the add and the delete scripts. So there's sort of no, no like model and controller stuff up here. There's no if post. So we start the, the body of the document. And we do what these flash messages. This is our flash pattern. And we're going to come back to this from a number of places. And we're going to set error sometimes and success sometimes. And so if these are set, we'll print them out either red or green. And then we'll make sure to unset them so that we follow the flash pattern. So this is really and truly just the flash pattern, OK? Just the flash pattern. And then we're in the index. So we're going to start and Print out the table. And again, this is pretty similar. That's all this is very similar. Name, password. The only thing that's a little different here is I am going to make these in the in the action column. I'm going to have both a delete and an edit. And I'm going to use a get parameter on delete and edit. Remember, you're not supposed to change data on a get, but we're not going to change data. And then we take the ID as a parameter, and then we make the word edit and delete. And then we have just down here at the bottom. A simple link to the add new. Okay, so let's take a look at what this is going to look like. So we've got this in the folder users, USERS, and there we are. Whoa, what happened there? I don't know what I sent, but now it looks better. So here's what we've got, right? Now we've got the index, we can add new. Then it goes back, never for this site. We can edit this, save it, and then we can delete it. And we have a confirmation dialog. So that's our overall application. If I just hit refresh, you'll see the, the record deleted will go away because it was a flash message. So there's how it goes. And if I do things like I do an inspect element on this particular thing, 
you'll see that that is an href id equals one. If I go down to the next row, edit id equals two, delete id equals two. So these are just links, and they're rendered as links rather than rendered as buttons. Okay, so that's that's our application. That's our index.php application. So let's take a look at some of the other stuff that we've got. All right, so I already showed you about this, about how, you know, this is coming from the rows. Oh, these are get requests because it's hrefs rather than post requests. So we, we're not actually doing anything. You'll see what happens in a second in these delete boxes. So those are just our way of navigating to the edit and to the delete and telling it which item we're interested in deleting. So the add button, this actually looks pretty much like code that we've been doing, except that we're um, now, we're not going to echo, echo the SQL and we're going to use our post redirect pattern and we're going to have our model controller up at the top and our view at the bottom. So this is going to be a well-behaved script, right? Um, so on the get request, it simply falls through, prints out the form, out comes the form, we type stuff in, we do a post, we post back to ourselves, and we post back to ourselves, the post comes back in, and the post date is there. We do an insert, three placeholders, right? And the prepare execute pattern where we fill the placeholders from the actual data that's coming off of the off of the fields. And then we're going to use our flash pattern. We say success record added, and then we redirect to index.php. Okay? So we're not going to redirect back to ourselves. We're add, we're done with the add. Everything is sort of totally happy. So we redirect back to the list, and then we'll see the new thing. And so that's why, as soon as I added, poof, you saw a new little thing where the where the it was added in the list because it goes back to index.php rather than back to itself. So add is very similar to everything we've done, except we've cleaned up and done our redirect and return and didn't echo up here because that was a bit of a violation of our our model view controller rules when we were doing the echo, and that was I was violating a lot of stuff in those earlier things. Okay. So that's the add, simple enough. It's really kind of just taking code that was in some of those other files and sticking it in its own file. <clears throat> so here's sort of the pattern, right? We're sitting in the main screen. We type add new, which is a get request to add.php. We type in all of our stuff. That post data comes into the top part now of the add. And then we are going to redirect to index.php and this little flash message will come out and of course it also unsets the flash, me flash message as soon as it's done. So it's only one flash message. So if you happen to hit refresh, if you happen to hit refresh on this screen, you won't see the flash message the second time. Okay? So here's our delete code. And remember the way this happens is when we delete, we pass in the ID of the column that's about to be deleted over here. Okay, so there is a get parameter. And so we start, get the session going. It's a get, it's a get first time, so that post isn't there. So it goes right past it. And it does a select name and ID from users where ID equals XYZ, and XYZ is this get parameter. So this is pulling up the user record, and not only is it pulling up the user record, but it's selecting both the name and the ID from it. So we will see the person's name and ID. This might fail, but as long as we're going to one that exists, it's going to work. And so it does complain with an error if they mistakenly type this. And we'll make one of these mistakes in a second. So you'll see that if the get request to pull up the record we're about to delete does not succeed, it just sends it back to index with an error. Okay, so this is a not happy. Okay, so it's not happy. It's going back to index and we'll see, we'll make that mistake in a second. But we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves. We're getting a bit ahead of ourselves. So we're in the get. We've got a get ID, which is that parameter there. And if we can retrieve it, right, it continues. Right, if it's false. And then we're going to say, then we're going to print out this message. Confirm deleting Fred, right? And then we're going to make a form with an input type of hidden and the name and the value of ID it comes from the row. Remember, we only re pulled one record in, so we do a single fetch here. We only pull one record in, but then 
inside this form here. We'll do an inspect element when we take a look at it. And then we got the delete. So hit the delete, which will post back or cancel. So there is no actual data in this form except hidden data. We hit the post, comes back in the top. Then it runs a delete from users where ID equals the number, a prepare, a substitute. Then everything goes well. So we say record equals deleted in the, in the flash message. And we go back to index.php and index.php will display us. So let's play a little bit with that. So let's add a record. Now notice I can hit refresh because this is flashed. So even though that was a post, there was a redirect that then showed the flash message. Okay, so if I hit the delete, you can see as I'm hovering at the bottom, it's ID equals 12. So I'm going to do a get request to delete, to delete PHP with passing in ID equals 12. And so it went and it did that select. It pulled up the person's name, and I can then press delete. But let's just start out by making a mistake. Let's say we're cheating and trying to delete record 123. Well, that code failed, set the error message, and then redirected back to index.php, and we show it as a flash here. So what just happened is I set a get of a bad number, and it came in here. And this row was false, and so it set the bad value, and then it sent it back to index with a bad error message. Okay? So let's go back and do it right this time. Let's do delete of this one. Oh, sorry. Switch to pointer mode. Delete. Now that get works. Goes through, finds it. So if I do an inspect element here, Here's my form. That's my form. There's an input hidden, post data, ID equals 12, and then delete submit. So when I hit this delete, that 12 is going to go back in. So that way the post code at the top, the post code at the top knows which one to, develop, the, to delete from the post data, right? So this is going to come in here, the delete and the post ID. That is from this ID is little hidden guy down there that's coming back in. And now I know what to delete. And the delete works. And away we go. So let's take a look at that. We finally do the post. Get rid of this, I guess. Goodbye. No. Get rid of that. Hit the post. Comes in the top of delete.php. Does the deletion. Then forwards, record deleted. Up we go. Okay? So that's the delete path. Pretty straightforward. Now, well, so here's I showed you all that by running it. We start, we start by um, pressing the a delete button, which turns into a get. It looks it up, shows it, then a delete goes back to delete.php. This is delete.php runs the post, that's all successful, pulls the data from post, which is a hidden field that's up here, then it sets the, the flash, then it sets the flash success, and then redirects to index.php, and then the flash inside index.php triggers, and puts that up, and then unsets it so that it doesn't come up. Again, hopefully the patterns here are starting to make sense to you. So that is the flow through a, a delete operation. So the only thing left we've got to do is the edit. And this is the only one we didn't do before. Okay, so this is new. Okay, so the edit basically puts up a screen. It has to have all the old data. So it has to select. And when we launch it, we tell it which ID it is. So there is a get parameter with the ID. We pull all of the data. We use a select star, give me all of the data for this particular user, whatever the ID number is. We pull that in. <coughs> and I guess I can go through the post data right here. So it, at some point, this post data has got all the old data in. And when you hit update, it goes into this post. We're going to uh, check to see if the name, email, and the ID 
ID, of course, is a little hidden guy sitting here. And then if it's true, we're going to run an update statement with placeholders for four placeholders. Oops. Name, email, password, and ID. Four placeholders. Name, email, password, and ID. Okay. Then we do a prepare statement. Then we have four little guys coming from the post data. This post data right here is all coming from that form. And then we run it. We do the update. It's an update. And then we do a, a smiling success and we redirect to ph index.php. So again, that's pretty similar to the delete. The difference is, is what we're doing here is an update. But on the first time through, we darn a post. First time through, we're a get. And so we have an ID. We do a select. Select star to get all the data. And if the row is false, we get a unhappy message. Then we go to index.php and it turns red. Just like in the delete, this code right here, other than the fact that we're selecting star, this code is identical to the delete code. That's to look up the one we're about to edit. And then, of course, we don't want to uh, forget about HTML entities in case we've got some errors in our data, in case there's some nasty stuff, because this originally person's name, email, and password did come from the user eventually. And so um, I print this out. This little syntax here, it's called the here document. It's kind of a little weird. It's echo, triple less than, and then a string underscore end, which matches this. So this basically says echo all of this stuff as if it was big one big long string. But what's cool about it is it does dollar sign variable substitution. So these two things will be the old values for name, email, password, and ID respectively. And since we've already called HTML entities on them, that is a safe operation. So this is called the here document. And the trick part is this triple less than. I just did that a little different to show you a slightly different pattern. So let's play a little bit with this stuff. So uh, let's add a new one, put some stuff in it, and uh, let's go to edit. So this is going to be a get ID equals 13. So it goes through, it doesn't, there's no post data yet. It goes through, hits the get data, pulls up record 13, which if we just do this, we will see that record 13 is this information. So it does a select to pull that stuff out. And then it falls through and it puts all this data in with HTML entities. Let me let me make a change here. Let me put less than, greater than, question, double quote, single quote, update. Uh, at least that's got HTML entities right. So so let's do uh let's take a look at now with inspect element all that's going on here. Okay, so we have this form post. So the name is and it's kind of, it's not really showing us. I'd have to do a view, another kind of view source. It's actually interpreting this, but we got it right. Um, and so all these things have their old values in them, right? All these things have their old values. And then there is the input value equals three. That is going to be what is going to go into the post data, okay? So this input hidden ID equals three, that came from row sub ID, right? So that input hidden comes from row sub ID, and that goes down into there, okay? And the rest of the stuff has just been HTML escaped and put in these form fields. So I'll get rid of that. And now we will hit the post. Oh, I guess I should probably talk about the cancel just for a second. I'm being lazy. It's not very pretty, but we'll learn how to make this prettier later. Oops, come back. Oh, haha, <laughs> clicking the wrong thing. So that's just our href to get out. So if like I want to escape and do absolutely nothing, I just href back to index.php. Okay, so now let's go in. After all that lead up, let's hit the update button, right? Post data goes in, back to edit.php. This ID doesn't matter. The ID is going to come in from the post data. Oh, sorry. My little scribbling device. There we go. And so it makes changes. So I guess I should probably do that one more time. Sam. Let's 
sam at umich.edu, one, two, three, make some sense of it, and then away they go. There we go. So, so we've got this thing now in four, five files. Let's take a look at the files here. Right. So we've got we've got the index.php that shows us the table and handles the returns from all those other things that are forwarding. PDO, of course, is our database connection. And then add adds the new. Delete is the delete confirmation. And edit retrieves the old data and then puts the data out and lets us make changes and then resubmit the post data. Okay. So that is. Oh, right. So here's the. Here is this. I already showed you all this, right? We um, we go to edit. We hit edit. It's a get request. It does a select. Shh, puts out the hidden ID, which is ID equals two. That's hidden in here. We do the post. So it needs the four things. It needs the name, email, password, and ID. So you see it's checking for all four things. If it does that, it makes SQL with four placeholders, right? Four placeholders. And then it does a prepare and execute with four placeholders, one, two, three, four. And then it says, I'm happy about this, smiley face. And then redirect to index.php and flash message comes out of index.php. So that's a bit of stuff. We started by the very first part of this chapter. We started by adding our first line of database code to a PHP file. And since then, we ended up with a multi-file CRUD application with redirect. And along, along the way, we sort of reviewed the basic database operations. We learned a lot about how PDO worked. We played it with SQL security. And we love PDO because PDO, PDO simplifies and eliminates as long as you're using prepared statements and not concatenation. Never concatenate SQL when there's user data involved. I concatenate SQL all the time when it's my data inside strings that I'm making, but never take post or get data or data that the user entered from a database or anything. Um, and we played a little bit with ex exploring errors and like what can go wrong and then looked at the CRUD file. And at the end of the day, this part right here is really the summation of everything we've done so far. Redirecting, you should ultimately know every single line of that CRUD application and why those lines do what they do in that CRUD application. Because that's really kind of like what the first 10 chapters of this were all about. Okay? Thanks.